I would like to introduce you to a really cool workbench. This is all kinds of cool. It's the Curve Shapes Workbench uh, by Christy, known on uh, GitHub as, looks like, C.H. Bergman. And uh, these are some really cool features. Uh, this was originally made for airfoils, it looks like. And uh, you can use this um, to interpolate different shapes. So I'll be going over three of the five features on this workbench today. Uh, so the first one is, uh, you know, I've got two sketches that are 90 degrees apart. And if I go to the Curve Shapes workbench and select both sketches, and then I select here, or rather here, interpolates a 2D shape into the middle between two 2D curves. You can see I get almost a perfect bevel. In fact, this is a perfect bevel. Uh, how useful is that? Now you can see it makes this in solids. I can also uh, make this, or surfaces rather, and I can make it into solids after they are made in surfaces. You can look at some of the features here. So you can specify faults for surfaces and that way you don't get multiple things created but pretty cool to make a solid uh, that well and I think that is all of the uh, useful parts of uh, this feature quick easy fast I have another uh, sketch right I have the same sketch as before but this time I've added let me you could think of it as like a little frame and what you can do is instead of just finding the surface and the intersection and extruding these things together. I, if I select these two sketches, and then the last thing I select is, I'll call this a, like a frame or a bounding box, then I select this, interpolate a 3D shape between two 2D curves, and optional whole curve, which uh, curve shapes refers to this as a whole curve instead of a bounding box or a frame. Well then, you get these lines, and uh, when I click on Curve Segment, I can make this a, a solid by clicking on True. You can see it does a pretty good job of um, almost doing like an advanced loft. Uh, this does not fit in the frame very well, and so if I change items, and in fact I'll make my solid false, and as before, you can also make this into a surface if you're into surfacing. So I'll make that false. I'm going to change my items to something like 50. Look how tightly that's held when you add 50 profiles. Now if I make my solid true, that fits even better. Now if I make my items 500, if I up it by a factor of 10, you'll notice you get a little bit of surface distortion up here. So it's really about finding the right number of items it's because you don't want to end up with this. I can even take this down to 100 and we uh, fit this box really well and what a unique and amazing shape that this takes. The next thing that I can do that's extremely useful is to generate a really crazy shape. So I've got, I've sketched out this shape, and then if I go to my front view, I've sketched this shape with splines, and then I, from the top view, I've sketched this shape, and I'm going to do the same thing, but with all of these curves. So if I click on my profile first, and then my guide curve second, I click this, which creates an array and resizes the items in the bounds of the curves in the x, y, x, z, or y, z plane. Again, I generate four profiles. And I can flip the box to true. And that is pretty good. But I can get even better if I make this have 50 items. And in my experience, 50 is about the perfect number for most things. You can see it fits very well within that box and that box. And you'll see there's a slight issue up here. And that persists whether I make it 50 or even 200. It's just going to be there. But this, instead of the other 
profile where you have to just find the right number of profiles. This gives you another troubleshooting option. I can go to offset start and maybe type in uh, 0.5. And as you can see, when I offset my starting point, point, fit, point when I offset my starting point, 0.5, I fix uh, the uh, weird anomaly that has happened. And I can do that with the offset end to offset my end feature as well. Uh, we also, as before, have the option to generate a surface instead of a solid. I also have the option to specify a twist value. I'm hopefully going to rotate this to the most uh, sensible angle. So if I rotate this to zero, well, let's make this uh, value one. You probably don't see anything. Zero, you see a little something. Zero, you see a lot, right? Zero, there you go. So you can actually twist this profile uh, by a specified amount. And I think that that is a uh, really amazing feature. Uh, what advanced surfaces you can generate uh, simply by using this workbench. So I think this workbench is super cool and I hope you find it cool as well. It would be amazing for making plain wings and maybe I'll make a video about that. Hope you have a great time working with this workbench. This video itself, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.